I don't know what day it is. Is it? Oh, it's Monday. Oh my God, it's Monday. Quarantine diaries. And laundry duties. Hello, friends and vagabonds. I hope you're all doing well. I know we're all facing strange times together, so I wanted to make a fun video that will leave you feeling entertained and inspired to make the most of your time at home. In this video, I share my methods for building a productive quarantine routine that's keeping me healthy, happy, and positive, and how you can easily do the same. I'll also be speaking about what's happening with the coronavirus and my thoughts on what the future may look like, and then wrapping the video up by sharing my much requested recipe for a healthy but absolutely delicious cabbage casserole you can easily cook at home. I'm very excited to welcome you into my home, but before we get started, I'd like to remind you to make sure you're subscribed with notifications enabled and ask you to please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. I'd love to hear your opinions, so please leave a comment about what you're doing at home to stay inspired and positive. Sending you all lots of love. Let's get started. I am not gonna lie, I'm really fiending to be outside. I wanna go backpacking, fly fishing, camping. So the only thing that I can really do that's outside is go on a bike ride. I'm lucky to live next to a small little uh, mountain range, little hills, and there's a couple of nice kind of back route climbs. Not a lot of traffic even before uh, the coronavirus pandemic, but right now there's just Pretty much nobody out there so I am legally allowed to do this and I'm leaving my house and coming straight back but I figured I could take you guys along let me get changed why is cycling gear so ridiculously bizarre <laughs> when you are a man sometimes you wear stretchy pants it's for fun Today, I'm going on a little bike ride, maintaining safe social distancing and self-isolation. I'm riding alone. I'm gonna be doing about 20 miles on the bicycle. I'll do my best to uh, make it fun and interesting and uh, bring you all along. We're gonna do a big hill climb and gain around 2,000 feet of elevation. And I'll tell you why. I enjoy climbing. So, first stop on today's ride is a, a little park by my house that is actually still open. It used to be a private residence. It was a fruit farm, an orchard for citrus. And uh, now it's kind of like a community park. Last time I came here, um, I saw a couple of coyotes. There are some coyotes here in the park and it's cool though. I love rustic farm, orchard, California. It just kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Grapes of Wrath, but uh, it's really pretty. And I'll take you on a quick little loop. Let's go. What I really love about this place though, is that it has some big, old California coastal oaks. This one is over 700 years old and uh, it's still alive. See a little beehive up there, check that out.
absolute favorite parts of the ride is stopping by and saying hello to these horses. Um, that's pretty cool. Even here in LA County, people can uh, have horses in their yard. That's definitely a life goal for Carrie and I. I love horses almost as much as I love Lanka. Oh. Hi. It is pretty bizarre right now. It does feel like we are leaving the past and moving into a new future of uncertainty. And I think that as humans, we really struggle with that because so much of our day-to-day -day is about planning for what's next. And that's really difficult to do at the moment. I'm willing to bet that if you were to ask yourself what you're most worried about, in the future, it's probably that element of uncertainty, right? It's the not knowing that's the hardest part. In this video, I'm gonna share a couple of the things that have been working for me in uh, handling those emotions and staying positive throughout all of this. But first, I have a large hill to climb. Here's something else I've been thinking. This road that I'm riding right now, it used to be a wagon trail for pioneers. You can actually see the old wagon trail right there. That's crazy to think about. Our world has changed so much, so dramatically in that period of time. And it feels like it's changing really quickly right now. But Think about how much uncertainty those pioneers had. Packing up their entire lives into a wagon, journeying across thousands of miles, a wild continent, not to mention all the diseases they dealt with on a regular basis. Plague, yellow fever, typhoid, smallpox, the list goes on and on. And yet somehow through all of that, they maintained positivity and hope and believed in a better future even when the distant future had a lot of hardship to overcome. I think we need to look back into our collective past and find that strength. We know we have a long way to go with this. I just read an article recently that said we should be preparing for the next two years to be like this. That's uh, probably news that none of us want to hear. But the question I guess we're all asking is, what does it look like? What does life look like? If we can't find a vaccine soon and we don't reach herd immunity, what does two years living like this with the coronavirus out there, what does that look like? That's a tough question. Nobody really knows. It's definitely going to leave a mark on our generation, one that we are not going to forget lightly. And I really think that this is going to affect a lot of um, what we take for granted as normal. I don't know what the new normal will look like, but it's not gonna look like the old one. But in this video, I'm gonna do my best to share with you a couple of tips on how you can stay healthy and happy and keep up that positive outlook through these dark days. So stay tuned.
thanks for welcoming me back, bud. How's it going? Huh? You happy? You happy to see me? I have just arrived home from my ride. Carrie's back here doing a little bit of uh, watering, garden. Which brings me to my next point. Another great way to feel okay during these times is to start growing something. Even if you don't have much space, even if you, all you have is a balcony, you can still grow potted plants, you can grow tomatoes, you can grow herbs, you can grow other vegetables. It's also a good idea, if you can, to take care of some of the living friends around. I love having bird feeders around my house and taking care of my little avian buddies. There really is something so powerful and therapeutic about taking care of other living beings, whether that's your vegetable garden or your little furry friends. I highly encourage that if you have a pet, play with your animal more. Playing with my dog leaves me feeling happy. There's something just so fundamentally grounding about watching the joy in your animal's eyes. Something else that you can do that will give you a feeling of empowerment and a little bit more control over your life and the situation that we find ourselves in is by working on and optimizing a daily routine. Since we can't plan super far out into the future, what we can do is really seize the day. But speaking about setting good routines, it really all does begin in the morning. That's why I love waking up, walking outside, and throwing down my yoga mat to get some good stretches in to start my day. Yoga is gonna help you get your blood moving. It's gonna help you limber up and feel less stiff. It's also gonna give you a lot of increased mental clarity. But if you wanna take that one step further, I would recommend after doing some stretches and a little bit of yoga, just taking a moment to sit with yourself and meditate. Be present. Even taking just a minute a day to sit with yourself and meditate is gonna do wonders for your mental health and your emotional well-being. After a quick morning meditation, I've been really finding a lot of solace in my journal. Taking 10 or 15 minutes to write down my thoughts, what's happening in my world, around the world, what I feel about those experiences. It's just a great opportunity to get your emotions out of your head and down onto a piece of paper. Plus, later on in life, you'll probably wanna look back at this period and have a better understanding of how you felt. This is a great way to keep that record. When you're journaling, I highly encourage you to write down some of the small, beautiful things that you've noticed in any given day. Another great way to deal with the stress from this current global situation is to dive into a book. Turn off your phone, turn off all other distractions, and go and sit with a good book. If you're in need of a good book recommendation, I've linked some of my favorite books down in the description, so make sure you check those out if you are looking for a good read. I highly encourage you to stay active. Integrating at least one exercise routine every day is gonna help you sweat out some of those toxins and impurities and help keep you in a positive mental state because exercise releases endorphins and dopamine which just make you feel better. Finally, after all of that, I take a nice ice cold shower and I focus on my breathing. And lastly, spend some time each day perfecting a skill that you're trying to learn, whether that is playing an instrument like guitar for me or learning a new language. Take advantage of this extra time that you have at the house and use it to become a better version of yourself. Find a new skill and practice. And last but not least, cook. All right, so it's been a fun and productive day. It's now time to cook some dinner. And uh, many of you have asked about the, uh, 
the cabbage casserole. It's been much requested. I figured I would share the recipe, share the love, and if you end up cooking this recipe, please uh, tag me in your Instagram stories at Alex the Vagabond. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. So what you're gonna need for this recipe, you're gonna need a head of cabbage. We grew this in the backyard. Uh, Carrie planted it in the fall and we're harvesting it now in the spring. And um, I've done it a couple of times before with heads of cabbage that we grew. These are the ingredients. You are going to have a head of cabbage, some organic rice. Um, I'm using Beyond Beef. You could use beef, you could use pork, you could use Beyond Beef. An onion, if you have a bigger one, one is fine. These are small, so I'm using two. A head of garlic, because I love garlic. Tomato sauce. And cheese. So, let's get started. Start things off by preheating your oven to 350 degrees. Add olive oil to a pan on medium heat. Slice an onion and discard the outer bits into your compost before slicing the onion into small little bits. When your pan is hot, break it up and brown it. Add one cup of brown rice to two cups water and cook the rice in a pot. Always add a generous pinch of salt or two. Once your protein is browned, remove it from the heat and set aside. You don't want it overcooked because it's going to continue to cook in the oven. Afterwards, add the onions into the same skillet and cook until translucent. Simple trick with garlic, just Smush it. It just pops out of the out of the skin. I love garlic and I really enjoy using this tool to slice it up. It's a lot easier than using a knife. Thanks, Mom. I'll link this in the video description if you want to simplify. Add the garlic to the pan and once browned, remove the onions and garlic from the heat and set aside with the beef. Afterwards, Add the sliced cabbage into the same skillet and cook until browned. Season your cabbage with salt and pepper. While your cabbage is browning, grab another pan. I prefer to use a cast iron for this step. Add a little bit more olive oil. Keep it on a low heat. Add in your beef and your onions. We're gonna hit it with some paprika. Some time. And then add in your tomato sauce. And I like to just fill back up with about a cup of water and add that in there to uh, make it a little bit saucier. Move that back down to a low heat and let that simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes. Hit that with some non-stick stuff because this is going to be nice and sticky. All right, here comes the cabbage. You're going to layer that but essentially you just want to have the bottom layer be your cabbage. Once your rice is cooked, you're just going to layer that on top of the cabbage. Final step, you're going to ladle meat sauce on top. Then you're going to cover it with foil. And finally, you place in the oven. So after 40 minutes, it is cheese time. You're gonna remove the casserole, remove the tin foil, and then you're gonna cover it in cheese. Put it back in for another 10 minutes. And finally, add your cheese. Mozzarella is great, as is Parmesan. The casserole goes back in for another 10 minutes to melt the cheese. Look at that. The cabbage.
cabbage casserole. Yes. It, it, look at that. Wow. The best part about this recipe is that it's comforting and decadent, but it's not all that bad for you, especially uh, if you use the Beyond Beef, but it's really, really good. Mmm. Okay, my turn to taste it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Come here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, it's definitely something a little different than what I'm used to making and what you're probably used to seeing from me. But then again, these are strange times and uh, things are gonna be different. I hope that you know this video was entertaining. I also hope that it makes you feel a little bit better and more prepared to uh, take on the next couple of months and the next year. And I, I truly think that if we maintain a positive attitude and we do the right thing every single time we have a choice, then um, things are gonna work out. I had fun today, I had fun sharing my thoughts with you, taking you on a little bike ride and showing you uh, a recipe that hopefully you can cook at home. If you do, please tag me on your Instagram stories at Alex the Vagabond. I'm super excited to see what you all uh, create in your kitchens. And yeah, let's just, uh, let's keep the positive vibes going. We are in it for the long run, but if we stay positive, things are gonna work out a lot better. So. I will see you in the next video. Please feel free to share any comments or questions down there in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends, and make sure you are subscribed with notifications enabled so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. We will see you very, very soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Peace out, everybody. You gonna say goodbye? Are you gonna say goodbye? Bye, bye.